Okay, so once we've done the login section, we then go into this particular part. So if we drill into it, okay, let's just find it then. Um, so IG services. Not there. So if we go to okay, so essentially, this is just sending, um, a REST request to the IG servers or whatever they've got, I believe it's a server, um, of a REST request um, to return back a data frame with these details in them. Right, so that's to be bid, offer, high, low, um, just essentially just market data um, for that particular instrument. Um, or node ID. So, to give you a rough idea of what this thing looks like, so essentially you've got a data structure like this. So you've got one node here. Let's say that's the root node. Let's give that a value of R. I'm drawing a mouse, so this might be a bit difficult. And then you've got children nodes here. That being that that being that, and that being that, these being children. So this has a root node of, let's say, a unique number like one, 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 and then each of these children nodes, let's say they're a subsection. So let's say this is the root node. This could be um, stocks, bonds, commodities. Yeah. So obviously with stocks, you've got subcategories. So they could be either revolving around energy, revolving around... Um, health, finance itself, and then you've got bonds here that can be uh, America, that could be bonds for the UK, bonds for America, and so on, so commodities, you, you get the idea. So these themselves have unique IDs as well. And if you drill down, let's say, enough, going many, many levels deep, you actually get to an actual stock, or let's say in this case, Shell, it's a oil company, and then they will have the details displayed. So with that in mind, what you're essentially saying here is get the top root node, which is basically R in this case, and then put that into a recursive template so that you can go through that root node into its children nodes and keep going until you find the instruments and, and save that data down. So you can see here that correlates to somewhere down here. Essentially we're passing a data frame of the details that we got from the root node and the IG service object. And essentially we're, we're getting the list of nodes that that object will produce and the names of those nodes that it's correlated with. So basically you have two lists of the same type. One is the ID of each node and the other one's the name correlating to that node. So like I said before, st uh, stocks, so this could, the first node could be stocks, second node could be commodities and, and so on. And essentially we, we create a set to keep a track of where we've been, of the nodes we've visited. And then we have a recursive function here that has that, that, that is empty, that object and just an empty list. So if we go into here now, which is where the main meat of the function is, we say while the list of the nodes is not empty, as we've populated it here, um, get the the get the last one, or essentially the the the, the last added, so the most um, yeah, we'll just we'll stick with that. The 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 last added one 
we check if that node is in our set of nodes. If it is, and we visited it, then re remove that node from the list and remove the name from that list because each node list, node and name list are correlated in their position. So essentially, zero position index zero and position index zero for both list and name would be the same. What would be linked? So essentially, it will be the code for stocks and the name would be stocks. Yeah. And then we're saying if in the case that that it doesn't exist in this set, so we haven't visited it, then we can say get that name for that, uh, that correlated node item, and populate that into the current name, add that to the list of nodes that we visited, so it, we now have a track of it, and then get the node, get the node or data if there is any to this object here. And essentially we're saying if this this uh, data has um, under its under its flag nodes. I mean, we all we're all aware of how dictionaries work. So essentially, you have a you essentially have a, a map and a pair. That being so. We could have something like, um, let's say, one is correlated to the number one, and then if we want to recall that from the dictionary, we can say thing one, right? So we're saying under that flag of one, we're equating a value of one. So in this case, we're saying under this object, under the flag of nodes, if there is uh, an object there that isn't equal that is equal to zero then we assume there is data there if it's not equal to zero we assume we assume that that is a uh, that is one of these nodes here that don't contain any data yet so we're still drilling into into it deeper so in that case we we try to go into it and uh, as in, in general it's worth bearing in mind that IG's API does contain a lot of errors uh, there are errors here and there things that you expect would work don't always work so it's always best practice to have a try and catch statement it will just help out in the long run um, and regardless if regardless if we find data there or we do find or we don't find data there then we pop out the current name so we're saying that so just to kind of overview of this we're going into this object with the name being correlated to this node we then go out of it we then assume that we are no longer correlating that node to this name so we're releasing the name from this list and then so we we then convert the the nodes that would be under this node and its and its um, ID, and then recurse over. So this this assumption is that that the node itself didn't contain any data relating to instruments. So so the way IG's instrument is, or, or this data structure is, is that you have stocks which have uh, multiple lines of multiple flags, but in terms, if it's a if it's one of these. Um, items, then it will just have its name and its so it will just have its name and node, and under that will be listed another set of nodes and names, and each of them would have a branch off. So essentially, we're saying get these items, put them into our list, and then recurse over them individually. And that way we're passing to that recursive function these names and these IDs and the set itself to check if we've recursed over any of these IDs themselves, that and the current name. That way we can have a, a, a branch 
of where we are going so it, it's kind of useful in de debugging terms that where you know that you've gone into this section then this section this section and then you're going back out it just it's a helpful pointer and then you pop out essentially saying that you're no longer linked to this item and essentially you keep going over until you get to your items and if if there are items that you do want then you go about doing this section so in this try and catch statement you get the single item and there are cases obviously when I did say before that IG did have some errors in, it, in, in its code and its data so there, there are cases where there are no epics and IG essentially uses epics to identify each instrument so if there's no epics there's no way you can make a trade there's no way you can do anything at all with that piece of data so just ignore it com completely so if we go into get details about epic using the service and epic ID we then get those details about the instrument we can then get this stuff and essentially this just converts it to a converts it to a string that we then save to our file so running this function we then save it here and we just keep going over until with the whole uh, to record all the data we need.